I have news on that. Okay, it has been said by CIG that what that was was a ship scan, a ship ping that showed the positions of the people inside, you know, but remained visible after the person went into FPS and it should not have. That was a glitch. That is not a feature 
Um, or maybe the, the glitch was that the ship scan shouldn't have shown the people. I'm not sure. But that leak picture is a glitch and should not be considered in any way representative of any game dynamic. Welcome. Zappa 323 continues its journey towards what's shaping up to be one of the biggest and most impactful patches of Star Citizen yet. We continue discussing the various aspects and features contained within. And this week, we're going back to Team Kian with a quick look at the updated lens and visor, loot screens, and new shopping interface. What's the difference between the lens and the visor? It's down to what you... And I'm sorry, everybody. I didn't realize, but my mic was not working. So forgive me if some of the stuff that I was saying is missed. I didn't know it until just recently. I checked it and just found it. So you should be able to hear me now. You wearing the helmet so not. The visor is essentially your hood projected onto the helmet. So it's shown on the visor in front of your Chad, face. Can you hear me? When you take the Yeah, I can hear you. Um, are you streaming on Twitch or YouTube? Uh this is on YouTube on the Snowbirds meeting room. It is my secondary channel. Oh, that's off. why I'm not seeing mm -hmm. it. Okay, I was afraid something was wrong. Yeah, and I wanted to let you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't worries. think I've, I don't think I've got that secondary channel <laughs> subscribed. I didn't know you had one. Yep, no worries. All right. Wearing a contact lens in lore, and that shows your hood as well. Of course, in a video game, you're gonna need all that HUD information. You get information about your active status, your weapons, what you're holding. Notifications. Yeah, uh, here we go. <laughs> your missions. Your comms. Your chatting. Everything like that is part of the visor and lens. But we don't want to do it and just, it's magically there, right? You get the lens, it's right there. You have all the information projected on your eye immediately. And the second you put a helmet on, you will get the visor experience. It's making the UI diegetic. The big now, this is huge. I thought that this was really cool. Oh, hey, Ty, you found it, okay. Um, I found this to be a very, very interesting experience and really enjoyed the thought that when you take your helmet off you still get some data okay when you put your helmet on it's going to be more enhanced more data is going to come up so it's kind of cool the upgrade in 323 isn't so much new information, but it's a new dynamic system for showing and hiding widgets based on your current situation. So all the basic information that you would see, like 
you need to know your health status. So you have all of these widgets telling you, okay, you're dying from this thing. You're, you have no oxygen. It's warning you of all the different hazards that you can meet out there. We've got regions all over the lens and we can specify which widgets we show on them. For example, down the bottom right, we've got the weapons. We've got the control hints and we've got low priority notifications, which can take up a lot of real estate. If something else shows on screen that would overlap one of those, it'll, one of the lowest priority ones will dynamically turn off and it'll all fit nicely onto screen again. Previously, all notifications were shown in the center of the screen, which could get a bit busy. We've now introduced the concept of low priority notifications, which Anything that's not super important to you will show in a box down in the bottom right of the screen instead of being loud and in your face. The UI for the missions and objectives, again, that's all been updated. The notification should animate over to the right-hand side of the screen where we've got our new objective UI. This presents essentially all the same information as the old objective UI, but in a much nicer package. We've also reworked the weapon UI, so you see a more detailed description of the weapon that you have. And this new visor and lens has been adapted to incorporate the new... This mini map is going to change everything. I'm liking this. I can't wait. Mini map. Another aspect of our dynamic widget system is that we can turn off specific widgets when, depending on what you're looking at. So if you've got your Moby Glass open, it can hide a lot of the widgets, maybe except for the notifications. If you're looking at a kiosk, maybe we just want to show the control hints on the right-hand side and everything else can be easily hidden. So with the visor, we can now customize the content that you see depending on the helmets you're wearing. And what this new dynamic region gives us beyond 323 will be allowing artists to style things based on different visors and different missions and different purposes. The code for the different styles of manufacturers, etc., is in now. You can see the potential of having different visors for different helmets for these different roles. The next thing is to get the artist onto the job, really. In 323, the only specialized visor is going to be the combat visor that comes. That comes with the dynamic um, crosshair. So. A lot of people are have a lot of controversy about this, and you can turn it off. They are giving us that option that you can turn it off or leave it on. So it all depends on what you want to do, how you want to experience things. And I'm glad that they give that. Because, like I say, a lot of people don't want it. So. It comes with the dynamic crosshair. But you can expect us to continue iterating on these visors in future patches. So, the loot screen builds on a lot of work that we've done in the personal inventory over the past few years. It's a new UI giving the player the possibility to just pick up stuff on the go. The existing personal inventory can be a bit cumbersome when trying to pick up ammo in a firefighter and things like that. So the new loot screen aims to address those issues. Now when the player goes over to a body or a box, it, it can quickly press F and this will bring up the new loot screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the players on the bottom. You can easily swap between both and equip things from what you're looting by just clicking or clicking and dragging. This screen is a more simplified version of the inventory, is to make the experience for the player to be quicker. Hey. Uh. We also now have a separate section for armor, which wasn't a consideration for Squadron 42. You'll just click a button and it'll take you to a new page and you can swap your armor with who you're looting and see everything that they had equipped. That's a wonderful feature. If you're going down there in, in armor that is not 
good for that particular thing that you're doing. Once you take somebody down, uh, an NPC that has stronger armor, you can get it quick. A nice swap. It's, that's cool. We also have some contextual actions in the loot screen. If you are looking for ammo for a specific weapon, you can hover over that weapon and it will show you any magazines or attachments that will fit that weapon. You can then quickly loot those or attach the weapon attachments using that menu. So when the player hovers a specific item, this will appear a tooltip that will tell you the available actions. And that will include, for example, a single click to equip, a shift left, a left click to store it. We've also added a button to the loot screen to swap between that and the existing personal inventory view. The inventory will stay, it's not going anywhere, uh, and it's more for your management. I gotta look at that again. Stay, it's not going anywhere, uh, and it's more... Combine all ammo. Very nice. Very nice. More for your management. So what you're seeing here is still, uh, the visuals are still for Squadron. We are planning to do a PU version and that will come for this release. And our team's last big addition to 323 is an updated shopping experience. So today when you're looking to buy an item, you look at that item and you see a flat piece of UI on the left-hand side of the screen. You then need to interact with this item and if the price is high enough, it will take you to a confirmation screen in the Moby Glass that shows you more information where you can confirm if you want to proceed with the transaction. With the new Moby Glass being introduced, we took this as an opportunity to remove the old confirmation screen and update some of the UI around the shopping experience. We really wanted to sell the idea of the AR lens actually putting things out in the world. You will see the overlay around the item with basic information, uh, you will see the price of the item and your balance. We're no longer going to be directly interacting with the item to purchase it. We'll now have hotkeys that will be displayed on the card. You need to press these hotkeys for a certain amount of time in order to complete the transaction. The process will happen in the background and then you will get a notification if it was successful. So you can see now in world, you have this interface with the information you need to see, okay, do I want to buy this thing? You just interact with it, buy the thing, and you're done. The default key for buying will be B for buying, um, but if you don't like it, you can go to settings and then change the key binding, like any other bindings in, in our game. The same will be true for renting if it is a vehicle or something that can be rented. We also have the concept of quick buy currently, which just allows you to grab the item immediately. So the main reason that we made this change is because with the new visors, we have redesigned some of the apps that you have, like shown on the visor and shown on the Moby Glass. We had the choice to either port the existing confirmation screen over directly as it is with all of the, its information or update the experience to something more fitting with our game now. Obviously, we still have the... This, this mini-map is just awesome. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> shopping terminals so if you want to buy things in bulk that's probably where you go but when you're just picking that one thing up quickly like that so for anyone playing star citizen 323 is going to mean a new visor and hud experience that's just going to look way better than before it's going to feel more diegetic it's been about polishing and improving and iterating on what we've already got in the universe. It's going to have the new looting system, which is going to make the flow so much quicker for you, as well as the new chopping system, looking nicer, being faster. We're hoping to provide a better experience to all the players so they have a more enjoyable experience with the game. And I'm really proud of the work that everyone on this team has been doing. So what are we learning this week? Okay, so that's the UI from the UI, uh, I see from a couple weeks ago, or yeah, week, a couple weeks, but I thought this was really good, and they did 
I can't wait for this to drop so I can get into the PEPTU and check it out, see what it's like, and test it out. So the next the next one is Maps and Apps. This was a really, really good ISC. Never sat in this one before. As Alpha 323 continues its journey towards becoming Star Citizen's biggest life in the verse as we know it patch yet, we know lots of folks have patiently waited to see one thing above all others, the Misk Raptor. What? The Moby Glass and Star Map app. Uh, the Moby Glass and newly christened Map app. Arrival complete. Welcome. So the Moby Glass is getting a massive visual overhaul for 323. The version everyone's been living with for years is, uh, it kind of does the job, but it's, it, you can see it's dated now. So the entire Moby Glass is overhauled from what it was before. It's using a new technology that we've built called cards, and we use cards for other UIs throughout the game. For the Moby Glass, it was a big task to... Con that looks so streamlined and clean. I'm excited for it. Convert because it has a lot of apps in it as well, so we need to convert all of those apps over to the new tech in order for the entire thing to be able to release. So in 3.23, we've got a really big improvement to the user. Okay, got your health, ship, environment, reputation, no mission contracts, and you got your notifications. <sighs> User experience, so everything's designed to look nicer and feel nicer. Ready to upgrade. And sadly, we haven't really had all the time we needed to get all the apps there, so you are gonna recognize the VMA and the comms app just as they have always been. But with that package, you're getting all the other apps with a visual update and also functionality updates for some of them. You've got a completely updated home screen, so you can do things like view your ship, you can see your health, uh, notifications, it's kind of the information you really need to see now. So we're also getting a fully new health app where you can see all the things that's currently affecting your health and all the stats that you would normally see on your HUD. Over time, we've added all these cool new things that can affect the player. So we're going to have things like radiation. We've got existing stuff like you can break bones. If you heal yourself, you can potentially overdose. You can have drug effects. All this cool stuff is happening, but it wasn't obvious to the player just walking around what was going on under the hood. So we added this new app where you can track all that stuff. So the health app is gonna be the place to go when for some reason you're feeling ill and you just need that extra little bit of information of what do I need to do to take care of myself to get out of this situation. So the contract manager has been in the game for a long time. And it's just grown kind of obvious that it's not doing all the things you need it to. All the functionality is essentially the same internally. Now, we've, we've seen in the old Bobby Glass where we do have this function, but it's more streamlined. It's not all over the place. And it looks cleaner. This is by far the big, a big change. And looks really good. But it needed a visual polish and also the user experience needs bringing up to date. So there's some new features like you can toggle between illegal missions. You can see what the rewards are going to be ahead of time. 
So no more randomly getting attacked by the police, <laughs> hopefully. It's probably your fault anyway. Some big improvements coming to the Moby Glass. That's coming in 3.23, uh, but one thing we didn't talk about yet was the star map. We've had the, the original star map in Star Citizen for a long time, so it was overdue for an update. Don't get me wrong, like the old Skylink app, it did what it should, but I think it had grown a bit obsolete. No, death to the old star map! That's harsh. The original one just showed uh, the stars and planets and so on, but we wanted to expand on that. So opening up the star map for the first time in 3.23, you're gonna realize that the star map is not just the star map anymore. It's the everything map. It's now called Maps app rather than Star Map. And why did we change it? Uh, because we now have the interior map, so this shows like your local area, as well as sort of zooming out and showing the uh, Star Map. So what is the interior map? It's a bird's eye view of the current environment. It's a really cool 3D map, so Instead of just having a top-down view, this is showing you the actual level. And it's presented as a fully schematic 3D view in which you can find every relevant point of interest, such as a shop, transit station, hospital, and the like. You can get them for ships, for landing zones in 323. In future, we'll expand on that and add it to more areas. And if you're not familiar with the location you just arrived to, or you're a new player and you're not familiar with any of them, actually having the spatial awareness of where the things that are relevant to you are is going to provide a giant step up in terms of the experience of the game in general. As it's fully 3D, you can move around, navigate between floors, zoom in and out, and so on, as you'd expect. We'll see the local area where you're walking around. OK, so CRD did state that when this comes, you're going to have the functionality, but it's not going to persist if you log out. So on this first iteration of it, it is going to be limited, but it is going to come with the full functionality of persisting markers. So just giving you a heads up on that, we'll see what happens from there. Something you've never been able to do before. Essentially, you'll be able to navigate between all the different rooms and, and different important areas of the game. It also offers a way to overlay your own data onto it that is specific to you. So, for example, the location of your mission objective. Whether you want to increase sales, uh, generate leads, or build brand awareness, Google Ads... Custom markers. You can also use it to plot a route to another location on the map. Drop a marker and navigate to it, so we'll see a line on the map that shows you where, where you can actually go and where the easiest way to get there. So on that map, you'll be able to just Click any room you want to go to. You can go between the different zones of the area and you can place a little marker and route all the way there. So navigating is one of the primary use cases we want to make as robust as we can for 323. And so part of that involves providing a, a variety of fallback cases in order to help you best understand how to get somewhere. So for instance, if we ask the AI system and it can't return you a path via its nav links and nav meshes, uh, we can ask the transit system. Uh, and if the transit system says there's a connection between the two zones, uh, then that would help you route. So at the time of recording, we're having issues loading all the different OCs that's in a big landing zone, for example. So we're looking into these solutions to make sure that you can track from one part to a fully different part of the area. So Star Map. Star Map is vastly improved. The main thing we wanted to change was make it a nice user experience. So everything in there has been overhauled. When you open your map, you'll first of all be confronted with your local area. So you'll see what room you're in and what's close to you. But you can also zoom out and you will see the universe open up in front of you as you zoom out. From here, we can see that 
entire verse. We can see all the planets. Space stations, Lagrange points, all of that good stuff. You can then click on any of those markers and you will be automatically panned and zoomed into them so you can see a little bit more detail about them. If you're zoomed in on a planet, for example, you can zoom in. Okay, so right now there's a fix going on in the Evocati patch. The contrast of the colors and, and the planets are intermixing and they're hard to see. So this is being worked on and CIG has acknowledged that they are working on this bug that's going on with the uh, star map. A little bit more and you can start to see the surface locations. So you can see towns, outposts. You got all the information you need about them. We're adding this new system where you can see all the amenities that are available at that location. So for uh, outposts, landing zones and stations, there will be a section here for amenities which will show you things like whether you can buy weapons here, whether you can buy ships here, whether there's a food court, whether there's a hospital or a clinic, all of these sorts of things you'll be able to see on those box outs, so you'll know which is the most appropriate location to go to. We showed in Citizen Khan, obviously, that these display much better now, so you'll see them uh, rotate with the map, and if they've gone behind the planet, they fade out, and if they're in front of your view, they're brighter, so you can see them more easily. So at the moment, if you zoom in, it will eventually get too big and you'll go through, but I am currently working on it so that it will zoom in to the surface and you'll never actually sort of clip through the planet. Generally, we've tried to make it feel like a much more pleasant user experience, so there's things like items don't disappear off the back of the map anymore, everything's easy to read. So, as always, the star map is what you're going to want to use to route your way through the verse. You can still set routes as you could in the previous version, but there is a little bit more feedback if there is a problem and you can't set a route, whether you don't have enough fuel or whether it's obstructed. It's going to be so easy. It's going to be so intuitive for you to you click the thing and there you get the button to say set route. It doesn't always just have the ability to set a route because you can't always set a route. We will let you know when you can set a route. Uh, there's one thing that, that I will say about the star map. When you take off, sometimes you'll get a route and it'll take you to a point. Then you find out you're obstructed. So you got to clear that and start on a whole new route and get it, get it going. It's a common thing with the current star map. So if they're working on that to make it a little bit more streamlined, I'm okay with that. There are a few things that are new for this new star map that have not been seen in the old star map. The primary one there would be search. So we now have a list of all locations. So there'll be a little drop down in your top left corner. If you open that up, you can see the full list of locations ordered by what is closest to you. And then you can also type any location and it will appear. So you could type, uh, for example, L1 and all of the Lagrange point ones would uh, appear. So this allows you to a lot more flexibility to finding what you're looking for when it's not as sort of, you know, immediately right there when you're at the current view. So you can go all the way across the solar system to look at something completely different. Star Citizen hey, is a massive systemic game. We've got all this cool stuff going on. We've got multiple players doing things at different times. So we wanted to improve the overall interface from the player to that game world. So a big part of that is the new Moby Glass. Finally, we've gone to this effort uh, to refactor and do the whole Moby Glass hub from scratch. New maps, new applications. This is going to be just so nice. Um, the mini map and this is going to change a lot. Uh, just 
once the markers are in there and they're able to persist, that's going to be make it even better. But like I say, this first iteration, they won't be able to share markers between sessions and you won't be able to share them uh, they will not be shareable um, and they won't persist from one session to another but for a start I'm okay with it it'll work it'll work and Everything is using new tech, and we have a much more flexible and robust system for the mobile glass under the hood. When you're playing stars, even if it's not complete. Say again. I said it is a vast net improvement, even if it's not complete. Agreed. Agreed. I am more than pleased with uh, what we have coming, and with it continuing, you know. It, you can't, I mean, this is huge. Because markers have been a big thing um, for a long time. And like I say, even though it's not going to persist in this first implementation, it's still good because you can see it. But unfortunately, they're not shareable. But this it's something that's going to come so citizen it should be a smooth experience you shouldn't be stuck trying to find whatever it is you need to find at the moment we're helping you do that with the new apps making it easier for you to find your missions or to even just find a place in the verse now that we have that framework in place um, then you know it's kind of the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do with it and how many apps we can develop for it and it's all using new tech, it's clean, it's the way we want it. The other big new feature is obviously the star map with the brand new interior map as well. Star Citizen is a game about exploring. It is a game about spacefaring. And even so, when even when you're not going around in space, it's still about exploring. Without the star map, it's really difficult to do that, right? This makes it so much easier to navigate around, to finding what you want and where you want, where it is, and how to get there. It, overall, it helps the player interact with the world, get to where they want to, do what they want to do more easily and quickly. Both there. Definitely. Oh, oh. Yeah. And we're in. Yeah. So, what did we learn this week? Okay. Well, so that's the map and apps. Can't wait for it can't wait for it so once it gets there it gets there uh, it's coming we don't know when we're gonna get uh, wave one so hopefully within the next week or so that's all I can say all right so from here I'm gonna go to the Evocati patch notes this is the latest build that is out there right now and space guy Ty is in the evil in in there right now from what he has said hello and with the patch notes that I see here um, there's been a lot of stability bug fixes full character customization re revamp the Moby Glass Rework Star Map Interior Mini Map, EVA Tier 2, new loot screen, new visor, lens, full S FPS combat refactor, ship combat, AI improvements, backpack reloading and ammo repooling, the dynamic crosshair, the physical shopping UI, and new uh, Arena Commander features, the Grav Royale, the new racetracks, the new pri Pirate Swarm Final Wave. And that's going to... The Pirate Swarm has changed. They're bringing in a Bengal Carrier. 
not a not a javelin. They're bringing in a bingo carrier on that. Uh, wow. We'll see how that goes. Um, I do have some questions for Ty because he's been my let me know and let my organization know what has been going on with uh, Ivacati. Uh, he's been talking to us, telling what he's encountered. And I know that he was having a problem with the uh, backpack reloading and not the ammo repooling. The ammo repooling was working, but the backpack reloading. Well, you've got those backwards, Shadow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. No, the backpack, the backpack reloading, uh, was working fine. The only, well, I've only had a chance to do a minor bit, right? So the backpack reloading, I got about between, and I was just mentally counting seconds, right? This is not exact. I didn't have a stopwatch out. Right. It was four to five seconds to load uh, a FS9 magazine from the belt. Mm-hmm. And then about six seconds to do it from the backpack. Which is not bad. Nope. But you but uh wasn't it caught in a loop? You said you had the, to drop your weapon? The ammo repooling. Uh I haven't tested it this latest patch. I don't know if they fixed it. It wasn't listed as fixed. Or hold on, was it? Let me pull up the patch notes again just to make sure because they tend to blur together after several days. <laughs> I don't see it listed as fixed, but what happens is the backpack repooling once you start it, the animation can get caught in a loop and just never end. What you have to do is then just drop, go into your inventory screen with I, and drag your... Because you can't interact with it. You can't hold F down to interact with anything. It's You're locked out, so you have to go into your inventory screen and physically drag your gun to the drop icon at the bottom of the screen. And once you drop it, then you can pick it back up, and you lose... You'll lose, like, one incomplete magazine, right? The last... Mm -hmm. Or, well, I lost an incomplete magazine. I can't say for sure what everybody will lose. But right. you're going to lose one magazine. It might be full. It might be, but that's not so bad. Just losing a single magazine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and by lose, I mean, I mean lose. It doesn't drop, or it didn't for me. It didn't drop on the floor. It was just gone. erased from existence. Right. Okay. Um, now... I know that you were able, with the star map, with mm -hmm. the, the map, it does say you're in your ship. It does start out with a layout, a schematic of your ship. And Correct. You hit F2, and that's where it takes you is your very close local mm -hmm. map. And then from there, when you scroll out, that's when you start seeing everything else as you mm -hmm. go along. With the setting setting the route, is that totally different from what we have now, or is it still kind of the same? Where you, or are we going to have to do a little bit of a learning curve? Okay, so there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve just getting used to what the star map looks like and how it behaves compared to the old one. I'm not going to say that that's bad that's a that that's bad it's just it's a little bit different everybody's gonna have to get used to it i don't think anybody's gonna mind getting used to the new star map oh no no um but as far as the routing goes if you once you zoom out to your system map where you can plot a course a quantum course you can select anything that you can see on the map at your zoom level mm -hmm. right and if you are able to plot a course, mm -hmm. you can click down at the bottom right and you'll see a route button mm -hmm. or a set route button. 
and mm -hmm. if you're able to set a route, it'll set a route. Mm. Um, you may not even see the set route button. It may not give you the option if you're not a able to. Okay. And of course, this is when it's working properly. Right. Um, it is not currently working properly in this build. Okay. It was working properly in a previous build. Mm -hmm. Not working properly in this one. It's been reported. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure they'll get it ironed out. But overall, it is much easier to find your location that you want to go to and set around set her out and that is not even using the search location mm. it's easier without using search using search is like cheat mode mm -hmm. so okay okay uh the water uh effects oh the water <laughs> Oh, the water has from the first implementation what does it look like now is it much better is it cleaner uh, is it more robust I haven't flown it since um, well I haven't flown over the water in a couple weeks just to look at it since I looked at it the first time mm-hmm I don't see how it – they haven't mentioned any – they've mentioned some minor improvements to the water, like minor, like things that would be – likely be invisible to mm -hmm. the normal player, mm -hmm. right? Just little tweaks that they've made probably just to make it perform a little bit better. Mm -hmm. To give anybody who might be listening an idea of context, I'm currently running an AMD Athlon uh, 5600X for a processor with a AMD Radeon – uh, 6800 XT mm -hmm. and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Okay. Right. So it's a decent, it's a really decent rig. Um, but it's not perfect. And of course, in Star Citizen, it's very CPU heavy. Even on my rig, at I keep everything on full, mm -hmm. full graphics all the way to the max. And I get frame drops every once in a while, but it helps. I'm also only running on 1080p because that's what my monitor is. I mm. need. You know, I haven't upgraded to 4K or, or anything higher than that yet. Mm -hmm. okay. It looks fantastic. Okay. With that in mind, it looks fantastic. I've got really good frame rates, uh, especially considering what the water is doing. Um, we're talking above 30, not 60. Right. Um, and it looks like it did more or less at CitizenCon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Once they implement Vulcan and then tune Vulcan. I think a lot more people are going to be able to experience it with less hardware. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think everybody's going to really enjoy. Well, Vulcan's, uh, Vulcan is going to water. be a game changer. It's going to make it... It, it better be at this <laughs> point. But if it's not, oh my god. Mm. But it's going to change a lot of things. And the optimization is going to make a massive difference to what's going to happen. So all we can do is cross our fingers, keep your expectations at a minimum, and just go from there. But when it, when it does drop and... I'm going to say this, expect bugs, expect things to come up, because nothing is perfect, nothing is perfect. Um, we're still in the alpha stage, so we are going to experience quite a few issues as we go along, but once we get past that and go into the next implementation with a 323.x then we'll see some improvements and changes um i'm i'm i really don't know when this is going to drop uh but if eva if if it comes out of eva Kati and goes to wave 1 within the next couple weeks 
I don't see this one dropping until the 1st of May to live or around the first part of May. We're in April already and we still haven't gotten a wave one. So expect um, it to come a little bit late. Yeah, go ahead. I was just wanting to add a little context. You're probably you're dead on with your assessment and there's probably a lot of people that might not understand the why of that because we've had builds go through Ibakati like crap through a goose mm -hmm. over the last year, right? Some builds didn't even hit Ibakati. They went straight to wave one or wave two or wave five. I think one of them went straight to wave five. Yeah. This is a huge build. Yeah. The patch notes are public. If you look at the patch notes, there are it says known issue or no uh, uh, it is testing feedback and focus and there's this laundry list right mm -hmm. i think this it looks like 15 12 to 15 items i'm not counting and then you go down and it says master mode this is not ready for testing or feedback right master modes it's in but it's not completely tuned not quite ready master modes the default item interact default item actions mm -hmm. instant hangers and freight elevators not even in evocati yet Mm -hmm. Hauling missions, not even any of Cotty mission yet. Mm -hmm. Reputation based hostility, not even any of Cotty yet. Mm -hmm. So the first few builds, mm -hmm. like the first two weeks of Evocati, was nothing but canceled patches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, not nothing, but we had a few, but the majority, we had one week where three days in a row they announced we've got a build cooking. Mm hmm. And then it went to QA after the build was finished, and QA gave it the red light. We did that three days in a row. Mm. This build is huge. It is full of a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's the most massive content drop that this game has ever seen. If this patch is delayed, mm -hmm. like it's one of the few times that I could see any reasonable saying, this patch is worth being delayed if it's delayed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's just so much. Uh, what about how is the replication layer split running? As far the replication, as replication, you know. the replication layer split does exactly what it's supposed to do in that it keeps the server from 30 K most of the time. There are rare instances of, uh, of the whole shebang going down. Mm -hmm. Right now, Evocati is running. We're still running one server per shard. Mm -hmm. Right? So all we've got is one server in the replication layer for the whole system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's It's gotten a lot better. It still has some kinks to work out. We still get what we call recovery loops, where the server goes down, the server error shows on the screen, server error, please wait, is a message. Uh, the replication layer is trying to spool up another server. Um, but something happens in which the cause of the server going down also gets replicated and moved to the other server. Mm -hmm. Right, and so then that server, after being active for a few minutes or even sometimes just a few seconds, also goes down. Mm -hmm. And that loop continues. Mm right mm -hmm. so that's that was happening a lot uh in the first few builds it still happens regularly but it's definitely improved mm -hmm. and i guarantee you it's still going to happen into wave one and wave two and probably all up to, to all backers five. yeah i would not be surprised if rare instances of this gets I would not be surprised if once this gets into live, mm -hmm. the servers are going to be in recovery loops a lot more. I think we're looking at a similar situation as in 318. I'm not saying as bad as 318. I don't expect people to be losing their accounts or ability to log in over this. Mm -hmm. But when it first goes live, the huge influx of players, I think, is going to uncover a ton of... Uh, yeah deadlock and server error causing issues yeah things that they that aren't visible to cig without that huge amount of players right right i hope i'm wrong right. i really do but 
this is where I, I all backers should I'm not, I'm not saying you have to or anything like that but when it goes to wave five that's when that's when you need a lot of players to get in and run it I'm hoping the draw of 323 means that at least at first all the backers will want to try it at once right mm -hmm. it gets into wave five all the backers are going to want to get in and at least get their hands and and test it out a little bit mm-hmm Mm -hmm. because it's such a big draw so hopefully and then of course it'll everybody will come in and it'll break and then they'll be like oh this is trash and mm -hmm. then they'll leave and it'll start working again but hopefully it will uncover a lot of things yeah yeah and and that's that's where you know you, you just got to take the chance <laughs> you just gotta take the chance I know I'm gonna be in there Wave 1, I'm gonna be in there um, You're not gonna see Shadow in 322 after <laughs> wave one drops. When, when 323 drops I am going to be Documenting a lot of things And uh, Taking screenshots Putting in issues uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot Of that because I want to get into Ivacati. And I'm going to work really hard at it. And get in there. And push it. So I can are you say. Are you sure you did hear what I just said about a week of canceled patches? Yeah. And then a week of server loops. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it is what it is. You want to make sure you know what you're getting into. You're going to get your chores done. You're yeah. not going to get much gaming done. You'll get your chores done. Yeah, but that's fine. I'll be in there. I'll be working on it. I'll be checking it out. You know, I will s report things that I, see, that I see. I can only, you know, talk about them. I cannot make videos of it or put it out you know to where people are going to be able to see it all of my stuff is going to the issue council but i can talk about it and that's pretty much it uh other than that that is pretty much everything that i had for this week is there anything else that you wanted to say ty before i shut down the, the meeting room today Just be patient with this one. Be patient with it. We've been waiting for it for a long time. It might take a little bit more time. It is so worth the wait. I haven't even gotten to try the AC mode yet. Mm. And they have supposedly redone that AI, so it's a challenge. Well, so I'm looking forward to testing that. Isn't this one... Aren't they supposed to be testing the resource management in a build coming soon? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. It's it's not even like that AC mode isn't even in. Yeah, it's supposed to be basic engineering gameplay is supposed to be available in Arena Commander experimental mode. Right. It's not. That's not in Evocati yet. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be coming in 323. Personally, I'm wondering if we're not going to see that one until the 323.1 patch. Maybe it's ready to go, but they've just got so much other higher priority stuff that they're trying to fix that it's, you know, they, they're not working on actually putting it in the patch. I don't know. Right. Right. Or maybe it's not ready to go. Maybe they're having issues with it like they've had with uh, cargo, uh, cargo elevators mm -hmm. and the new cargo refactor. Mm -hmm. They don't tell me. I wish they did. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I mean... All we could do at this point in time, the hype is there. But me, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm excited. But I do my best to keep my expectations at a certain point. Because of the fact that, you know, you get too hyped. Something doesn't make it. And you get hurt. And it does. It, it does hurt. But... All you can do is just go with the flow, see what's happening, and go from there. 
managing expectations is a skill. Yes, it is. It it takes practice. <laughs> it does. Star Citizen will build that skill if you let it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me, Ty, on this one. Oh, thanks for having me on. uh, You're welcome, man. So, I hope everybody enjoyed the Snowbirds meeting room. Um, I won't be doing a stream after this one. I'll be working on some stuff and getting ready for the week. So, everybody, have a wonderful Sunday. Take care and... Thanks for Ty for coming, and see you in the next Snowbird Meeting Room next week. Have a good one.